Cookies that track your online activity are slowly being eradicated. In recent years, major web browsers, including Safari and Firefox, have been restricting these practices. Even Chrome has realized that cookies do present a privacy nightmare. Now, even though this practice of tracking your online activity is being removed, there are other methods out there that are even worse than before. This is the Digital Prepper, and today I'm going to be talking about browser fingerprinting, what it is, how it can affect your digital presence, and how you can prepare to stop it. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you do like the video and want to discuss anything regarding digital preparedness, or just preparedness in general, be sure to help this video get out to more potential preppers by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing to see more like this. With that being said, let's get started. Now, before we talk about why this new method of tracking is affecting your digital presence, what exactly is browser fingerprinting? First of all, let's talk about cookies. Browser cookies are considered to be essential to the modern internet, but overall a vulnerability to your digital privacy. Cookies are essentially text files with small pieces of data that are used to identify your specific device as you use the internet. This data is labeled with an ID that is unique to you and your device and can include information such as individual login information and other preferences, such as sports news versus politics, what items you're adding to an online shopping cart, what you may have purchased from that site, or even what videos you may be watching from a streaming site. Now, all in all, this isn't inherently bad, as it does provide a convenience to some. For example, coming back to a shopping site, that site might use your preferences stored in those cookies to display advertisements of products that it thinks that you might be interested in. The cookies themselves can't infect computers with viruses or other malware. However, some cyber attacks can hijack cookies and enable access to your browsing sessions. The real danger, though, lies in the cookie's ability to track any individual's browsing histories. Third-party cookies let advertisers or analytics companies track an individual's browsing history across the web on any websites that contain their advertisements. This means that any company with advertisements on one website can use the cookies that are generated to track your search history for example, if you search for camping equipment at a specific outdoor store website, they could know if you went to another website to search for that same piece of equipment. So, with all this being said, what is browser fingerprinting? Well, because cookies are on their way out, as advertisers have tried to get around cookie blocks and limits put on ad tracking by companies like Google and Apple, Advertisers are now inserting fingerprinting code onto websites that collect data on your online activity. This code takes information about your browser, your network, and even your device and combines it all together to create a set of characteristics that is mostly unique to you. The data that they can get from this includes things like the language that you use, your keyboard layout, your time zone, the version of the operating system that your device runs, and much more. Because most of the time you don't even know that you're being tracked, once this has been established, your browser fingerprint can potentially be combined with other personal information, like linking it with other existing profiles that these companies have, or comparing it with information that other data brokers have about you. So, with all that being said, why should you even care about browser fingerprinting and why can it potentially be a problem? Well, first of all, there's very little transparency around these companies that run these fingerprinting scripts. And because of this, this practice is confirmed to be widespread across the entire internet. 
Research from 2020 has found that a quarter of the world's top 10,000 websites are running these browser fingerprinting scripts. Now, I will say that not all fingerprinting is bad. For example, this technique can be used as a way to spot potential fraud, such as banks using it to identify suspicious behavior by comparing your location. Obviously, if you're in the United States and your bank finds that someone logs into your account in another country, they're going to be able to have that information, like location, browser, operating system, and be able to compare this to your normal information that they have on you to be able to reach out to you to make sure that your account isn't being hacked. With all that being said, the widespread use of fingerprinting for targeted advertising and tracking people's online movement does raise legal problems. Many websites don't even tell consumers that they may track people with fingerprinting. And over in places like Europe, regulators have even called for a crackdown on those banners that you might see on websites asking if you give your permission to be tracked. The banners are so ubiquitous and frustrating that many people just click accept without even understanding how they are agreeing to be tracked. So how can you prevent and prepare yourself from being tracked online by browser fingerprinting? Well, unlike cookies, it's actually really hard to stop browser fingerprinting. Cookies are stored in your browser, and it is possible to delete your cookie history, to block cookies, or to turn them off entirely. With browser fingerprinting, it's all invisible, and it's basically like having a cookie that can't be deleted. What you can do, however, is you can use browser plugins or extensions to stop or reduce fingerprinting. For example, like using uBlock Origin on browsers like Chrome and Firefox can work. However, some researchers do state that many anti-fingerprinting tools aren't even all that useful. The biggest thing that you can do to stop this is to switch to a privacy browser like Tor or Brave. These kinds of browsers prevent fingerprinting by essentially standardizing all of the parts of its browser so that everyone using that browser appears to have all the same fingerprint. Unfortunately, sometimes these browsers might not be compatible with all websites and obviously companies will most likely not allow them on their private networks. The good that is coming out of this is that private browsers are evolving to have more and more anti-fingerprinting technology while not breaking when using certain websites. Links to these will be in the description below. To wrap things up, removing cookies can help you mitigate your risks of privacy breaches and stopping browser fingerprinting will prepare your digital footprint from having your data taken and stored by these data brokers and other companies. Like most things, I do try to give you guys simple solutions to be able to prepare, and just remember that you don't have to be a technical expert to be able to work on your digital preparedness. Take a look at my other videos as well, and do leave a comment below if you have any lingering questions on how to get started. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to get more videos like this that will help you with your digital preparedness. If you have any ideas for more videos or just want to share your experiences with prepping, please leave a comment down below. Stay safe, stay prepared, more digital prepping to come.